What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and Razer just revived the Deathstalker lineup with the brand new Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro keyboard. Super slim and low profile. So today, we're gonna go through it all for you guys, feature overview, take a look at the brand new switches, all the good stuff you're gonna wanna know in case you're interested in the Deathstalker V2 Pro keyboard. So when it comes to first impressions, mine was admittedly wrong at first because I figured, you know, okay, who's gonna want another wireless full-size keyboard? But when it actually came to, you know, using it and gaming with it, I was really impressed with how Razer went about this keyboard. Taking a look at it, it definitely still has the Razer design language, but now the Deathstalker V2 Pro comes with this really nice low profile build. You have rounded edges and an all aluminum top plate. Taking a look at some of the physical features, on the top right side of the board, we have this metal multifunctional roller. This has some nice tactile steps and just feels really nice during use. Can obviously be used for like volume control and can be remapped in Synapse. Now, next to that is what they call a media button. Tapping it is a play pause toggle. Double tapping lets you skip songs on Spotify or something. Then tapping thrice will back to the previous track. Now, since it's a wireless keyboard, you can connect via the hyperspeed dongle. There's also Bluetooth 5.0 built in. And on the back, there are these three quick buttons. This lets you connect to three devices at once. At the tap of one of these quick access buttons, you can just pair and switch automatically. Additionally, with Razer's wireless hyperspeed support, you can connect two different peripherals with one wireless hyperspeed dongle. And that'll let you free up a free port on your PC. They have listed on their website some of the compatible hyperspeed peripherals. It's most of their recent wireless releases. Now, battery life on this is also really impressive here. They have a battery life calculator sort of on their website, but with 50% brightness with the chroma spectrum lighting, you can get around 40 hours of use. And obviously if you lower the brightness, you can get close to like 100 hours on a single charge. And that's just crazy. I've been gaming with this for around two weeks and I've yet to charge it. Now going along with that, while we still touch on some physical features, they have a nifty battery level indicator built into the keyboard with the indicators above the arrow keys. Function end will light up with each dot estimating around 20% battery. So it's a nice quick and easy way to get an estimated reading of how much battery is left. It's something so simple that I haven't seen before and they just pulled it off perfectly. Keycaps used here are an ABS set that they say have this ultra durable coating, they call it to prevent like fading and that notorious shine. And honestly, these hold up to their marketing. For a smoother finish, they do a really good job of not showing smudges or oils from your fingers over time. Now. Getting into the goods, underneath those keycaps are the brand new type of switch from Razer. These are their low profile optical switches. It's the same as their previous optomechanicals in terms of you know how it works, but with these low profile switches, it's now like half the height. So the reds that we have here are linear. We'll be making a purple clicky switch later on down the road, but these have that same nice silicone damping pad on the inside like we saw in the last V2 variants. So we get all the goods, but now in a smaller build. They actually at just 1.2 millimeters with 45 grams force and have a full travel distance of just 2.8 millimeters. But what's really interesting about these versus other low profile switches out there, like take chalk switches for example, those low profile switches aren't really compatible with your everyday keycap set because you have the two little prongs in the middle, uh, not the traditional Cherry MX stem, which we still have here on these low profile optical mechanicals. That means you can pick up a different keycap set if you wanna really customize the look and it'll still be compatible because you have that traditional Cherry stem. You can see just how smaller these are versus a regular keycap. It's over a half size difference. Stabilizers here really aren't anything special. They're not factory lubes, or at least they definitely don't appear to be. But for a keyboard with this low profile build, they don't sound too bad. So now we'll queue up that sound test of the new Deathstalker V2 Pro with these low profile red linear optomechanical switches.
Yeah, you know, not too bad overall. You can definitely feel that they have that silicone dampener on the inside because when you bottom out, it's definitely a softer feel and it's not loud by any means. These are not the smoothest switch I've ever tried, but I mean, at the same time for a keyboard with this build, a super small low profile switch, really can't complain with the overall execution here of how it feels and how it sounds. So how is it for gaming? And I'm happy to report all is good. As an Apex Pro TKL user, I'm used to those faster switches. So with here, the fact that they are just physically like almost half the size of a traditional switch, uh, you definitely notice that while you're gaming because you bottom them out a lot easier. So technically because they have a shorter travel distance, they're gonna be faster than a traditional key switch. Also throw in the fact that they're optical and uh, yeah, you're definitely gonna notice the difference in terms of speed and performance versus a traditional cherry switch. But for me during use, there was no hiccups. There was no lag. I barely ever use Bluetooth on anything. So the whole time during my testing and gaming, I was just using their hyperspeed dongle and everything felt just really great and responsive. Strafing back and forth, no noticeable lag at all. But again, guys, it's 2022. Wireless peripherals are pretty much as good as the wired variants. I know there's still some naysayers out there, but the tech we have today, especially Razer's hyperspeed tech, had no issues whatsoever. I will say though, just due to the build of the low profile keyboard, it definitely took me a minute to sort of readjust to this new ergonomic form factor for my wrist. Cause I'm used to a full size keyboard or full height, I should say, with also using a wrist rest. So now cutting that in half pretty much, as I said before, it was a bit of a change up, but it's a really nice surprise and a really nice feel and a really good job in terms of execution from Razer reviving this Deathstalker lineup. So one of the last things I'll touch on is RGB. You know, we got to do it. It definitely has a nice and bright glow to the keyboard, like at 100% brightness with, you know, they have the even shine through on the characters and the keycaps. It's honestly unnecessary to be that bright when you can still, you know, save a good chunk of battery life at like going 50% brightness or below. So like I said before, with that battery calculator, you're much better at going 50 and below. It's still the same chrome effects that we've had for years now, nothing really new. One good thing though, is you don't need synapse to control the lighting. Function, control, and then one through seven changes through the seven effects. And pressing the number key again, like a second time, could do things like cycle through colors for an effect or even change direction. So if you've been a gamer for a while and you're familiar with the you know gaming keyboard space, you'll notice this is pretty much the direct competitor to the Logitech G915, which I reviewed back in 2019. And it looks, you know, not nearly identical, but it's that same exact form factor. Wireless, low profile. Yes, that was a really great keyboard. When that launched, it was $250, which is the same exact price that this is launching at now. You could still find the G915 for around 200, but the obvious benefit to now having this newer Deathstalker V2 Pro is like I said before, the optical switches. They are faster and more reliable than a traditional switch, even though they're chalk switches and stuff. Uh, these are just the facts. Optical is better than a traditional switch. And also the biggest complaint that I've always seen with the G915 is the fact that with those chalk switches, you can't use whatever keycaps that you want. So if you lose a keycap or a keycap breaks on you, you're SOL. But now with the traditional cherry stem in the middle, you can use whatever keycaps that you want now. And again, it's faster. Now, for me, like I said, personally, all great stuff. I'm much more impressed than when I first saw the, the press release with this keyboard. I just figured, all right, it's just another wireless keyboard from Razer. Um, I'm very familiar with their Death Stalker lineup, so I'm happy they revived it, but I wasn't pumped at first. But using it, seeing the way they went about this and the overall performance and the build, I'm really digging what they have here. However, this keyboard isn't for me. They are releasing a TKL version called a Deathstalker V2 Pro TKL, which is obviously a TKL form factor. I believe that's releasing around the holidays. Don't quote me on that, but that'll obviously be a competitor to the Logitech G915 TKL, which is a keyboard I love and use all the time over at my entertainment setup with, you know, my home theater PC and stuff over there. A nice, slim, wireless keyboard that I am super pumped for Razer to compete with and put out with the new optical switches. That is gonna be, I think, a much more worth holding out for and waiting for that version. Because again, I have no use for a full-size keyboard. The TKL version, smaller form factor, is still gonna have the media uh, button as well as the dial. So uh, I'm definitely pumped for that. But all in all, really good things from Razer here. It's leaving me more impressed than I thought I would be. And like I said, if you can hold out, definitely do it. The TKL, I think, is gonna be the way to go here.
So guys, that'll wrap it up for my review of the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro Slim Low Profile Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.